The closest star to Earth is... Wait for it. The Sun? Duh. At 8 light minutes. But the closest star to Earth that isn't the Sun, is Alpha Centauri A, at 4.3 light years distance, that's also the time it would take you to get there if you would move at the speed of light. Which, you literally can't because physics. Unless you're commanding the Enterprise from Star Trek. By our current technological capabilities, a spaceship accelerated to 80 kilometers per second would have to travel for roughly 18,000 years to get to Alpha Centauri. For reference, in this time frame, humans progressed from creating the first organized settlements to our modern day society. So conventional fuel isn't an option. The fastest man-made object is the Parker Solar Probe developed by NASA, launched in 2018 to observe the sun's outer corona. It hit the maximum speed of 192 kilometers per second. The fictional Enterprise had a maximum speed of 2 billion kilometers per second, or 6,700 times the speed of light. That would get you to Alpha Sun in only 5 hours. Sadly only works in the Star Trek universe, which you can experience in Star Trek Fleet Command. It is a free-to-play strategic MMO game on both Android and iOS. Join millions of players in exploring the Star Trek universe by finding strange new worlds, new civilizations, and going boldly where no one has gone before. Customize your own fleet and recruit your crew, choose your weapons and head into epic battles against the Klingons. Or would you rather have them as your ally? Choose between a ton of iconic starships such as the Enterprise or the Klingon D4 class. Choose the head of your crew from several legendary characters such as Captain Kirk, or Ambassador Spock himself. Perform daily missions to get nice bonuses that allow you to travel even faster and further. Download the game from the link in the description and explore the universe that awaits you. And now back to humanity, what if we noticed a big asteroid, actually no, a big black hole, closing in on Earth in 50 years, what would be our best shot at escaping the solar system? Right now. The most feasible option would be nuclear weapons. Simply put, load a starship with half a million one megaton nuclear warheads, and one by one, detonate them outside while using that momentum to speed up. Doing that would accelerate the ship to possibly a tenth of the speed of light, which certainly is great. The astronauts would get to Alphason in 43 years. But of course, there are tons of issues with this idea. First of all, you need to slow down on the other end. And you can't just hit the brakes on the rocket, you're traveling at 30,000 kilometers per second. You'd need to once again detonate just as many nukes, but this time in front of the ship. So, half of your fuel goes to deaccelerating. And I'm sure there shouldn't be any safety concerns about a starship with a thousand gigaton worth of nuclear weapons on board. And to produce so many nukes we'd have to revive the Cold War and put it on steroids. A rather more elegant option would be solar sails. Attaching a reflective pane a few kilometers in diameter to the rocket, and then having a giant laser shoot at it, could accelerate the ship to even greater speeds than nukes. The idea of light sails is actually planned to be used in small probes, but when it comes to huge starships, we once again have a few issues. Constructing the reflective pane isn't a big problem, it can be done in space. The harder part is building a laser powerful enough to accelerate the ship, possibly equivalent to hundreds of nuclear power plants. It would be ineffective to have it positioned on Earth due to the loss of intensity through the atmosphere. So our best bet would be the moon. And once again, slowing down would be a huge issue. We could invert the pain so that it slows down from the light of the upcoming stars, but that would be very tricky. Remember nukes? Their matter-energy conversion efficiency is only at around 1%. What if we raise it up to 100%, something that is achievable through antimatter annihilation? When a particle and an antiparticle collide, they release a ton of pure energy, leaving nothing behind. Having just a few kilograms of this fuel on board could accelerate the rocket to half the speed of light, making the trip last only 9 years, or even less. The only issue though, is that creating one gram of antimatter costs three times the GDP of the entire United States, or, 
$62 trillion. Scientists have been able to only create individual subatomic antiparticles, but nothing on an industrial scale. So, unless a breakthrough happens in the nearby future, antimatter propulsion is sadly off the table as well. By the way, have you ever seen a space video of mine that doesn't mention black holes? This one won't be an exception. Welcome to black hole drives. As some of you might know, black holes emanate Hawking radiation. The bigger they are, the less they radiate, the smaller they are, the more they do. And in the process of radiating, they slowly evaporate. But this very radiation could power up our spaceship. We'd need a very very small black hole, with a mass of about 1 trillion kilograms, making its size similar to that of a proton. Its power could accelerate the rocket to near light speed, making it a perfect energy source. But how do we even acquire a small black hole? Do we go hunting for microscopic black holes and then caging them? No. We would have to make our own one. The most effective way would be by concentrating a lot of laser beams in one point. And by a lot, I mean it. We might need planet-sized lasers, all concentrating their power into one single microscopic point. All that energy density would create something known as a Kugelblitz. A black hole made not of matter, but of light. In other words, the black hole would act as a container for all that energy and slowly release it back powering the ship. Perhaps a Dyson Sphere collector around the sun would provide enough energy to act as a laser, but I doubt that's happening very soon. Up until now, all solutions involved slower than light speed. The next one presents a faster than light solution, the Alcubierre warp drive. But wait. Didn't I say that moving at the speed of light or beyond is literally impossible? Yes, if you're trying to overtake a light ray on the same density of space-time. Space-time being the fundamental fabric of the universe. But if you distort the space-time around you, so that the fabric in front gets shrunk, while the one in the back gets expanded, you create something akin of a space-time wave. Instead of making you faster, it makes the distance you have to travel through space-time shorter. That would make you able to travel faster than light, without breaking physics, since you'd still travel at normal speeds, just inside of the warp bubble. Distance would now become meaningless, as you could travel billions of light years and days, all depending on your spaceship's power. The obvious question is how do we distort space-time? And the sad answer involves a lot of negative energy density and uncertainty. Is it possible though? Most likely yes. We even have NASA researching this topic. This would make the Alcubierre warp drive the most promising propulsion system to carry us to the stars. In the end, there are lots of proposals for a futuristic interstellar propulsion system, and none of them come without their drawbacks and hurdles. But humans are humans, they've proven countless times that limits are just something to be broken, be it either stupidity or brilliance. Especially considering the accelerating speed of discoveries of the recent decades, you might very well witness the day that an artificial intelligence stepped on a planet of Alpha Centauri. And if you behave well enough, it might drag you for a ride. Who knows? Maybe I do.